Hey, 944 fans, Tim at CRE again here in San Diego. Just got a really nice phone call from an old buddy. He used to work with me in the shop 10 years ago, uh, two shop locations ago, Tyler Hendricks. So I'm making this video for him. He wanted to see around the shop like a virtual tour in the cars, how things have developed in the business. And uh, it's only for him, exclusively for him. So nobody else can watch it, okay? Um, so a uh, quick tour out in the parking lot. And here is racing customer 944 spec car here's one of my, my baby's investment that's a 81 924 turbo they call it a series 2 still got the original spider webs in it and stuff very complete car fun fun uh, this is a customer 86 951 in for a spun rod bearing unfortunately uh, here is a uh, 84 944 this is the the uh, the owner of this car got me into the porsche club 35 years ago it's fun to uh, be able to work on that family's car um, now, uh, you know, as a 911 guy way back then. But uh, here's a car I recently acquired for free. It's an early 944. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to make a race car out of it or what. This is a um, 83 944. I used to autocross against this car in the 80s. And um, this is, uh, I picked it up last year. It's got a lot of really cool trick stuff on it. It was built up by Vince and Cecilia Knauf. And uh, we're going we're gonna, to uh, make it a renter for people to uh, experience uh, autocrossing in the 944s. And uh, um, really cool car. It's the subject of a three-part YouTube video on my channel, Tim Camo. Uh, uh, a three-part discovery, 944 discovery, we call it. In the back there is a car I own. Uh, pretty cool model, uh, 85 and a half black, 944, five-speed. Saratoga top, cloth sports seats, mirror bras. Uh, it's got a European fog light in the rear, and uh, this guy right here, and uh, toaster grill balance. In front of that's an 83 944 with an automatic transmission. Uh, only 75,000 miles on that chassis, though, so we're going to build it up and, and get it driving, and then we're going to convert it to a five speed so it's got a lot more universal appeal and um, yeah, easier to sell. There's our sign being redone. That's the CRE sign. Shop is, is uh, definitely a 944 shop. It's loaded with only 944 stuff. There's some cool uh, Porsche propaganda on the walls over here. Uh, they were so slick uh, and smart ass uh, with their advertisements in the magazines during the 80s, 90s. So I've cut this out and blew it up and uh, stuck that on the wall. Here's some Pictures of uh, 944 spec race cars um, on the track and, and in the grid. Uh, number one lift in front of me, number two in front. This car above my head is an 86 951. Uh, really nice garnet red metallic paint, one of my favorite colors. And that's a new owner in, in for uh, PPI, pre-purchase inspection, uh, actually after he got it. But uh, it's missing a few things. You can see the wires are hanging down right here. It's missing the, the bottom cover for the fuel pump and the strap that holds that in. There's an 87 944, pretty much redone. I mean, this we worked on almost every system in the car and brought that thing back to life. Uh, over here on this wall is the trophy shelf. Uh, finally got around to some years back uh, making a, a shelf or set of shelves. I had trophies in the office, in the garage, in the shop, in boxes, and. Uh, couple of friends, Mike Dare and Jonathan Norris, helped me build up that uh, trophy shelf. It's, uh, you'd think it'd be a conversation starter, but it's more often than not a conversation ender when uh, people ask me, why do you do the things, how do you do it like this, why do you do it like that? And I just point to the trophy shelf and go, that's the reason right there, it works. So nice, nice uh, flags up on there. There's a super cool early 911 poster still in the large format, 33 inches by 46 inches, monster. A couple other um, posters in the back there. They, these were ones that were, uh, if they're tacked to the wall, they were deemed, you know, junkers. They weren't good enough to collect for anybody. Number two lift right there. I've got a lot of parts on the wall here that I normally use in high volume, so they're all ready to go. Um, engine seals, water seals, suspension at the bottom. It's all. It's pretty much organized. But uh, a couple of you, the poster there. It's a great. 9, uh, 931, 924 turbo poster right there. And this is a real unusual one, Yvonne Lendl and Porsche. It's a, Porsche sponsors a tennis cup. I think, I don't know if they still do it or not, but there's that. Blah, 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 shop equipment. 
there's all the parts for Bobby Touch's uh, engine getting the uh, that thing rebuilt. So this is this is his engine right here. Uh, spun a bearing, unfortunately, damaged the crankshaft. Not a problem. We sourced another one, got it all cleaned up. It mics out good, standard standard. So we're gonna rebuild that. Um, Lots of support from uh, Liquid Molly over the years, so you'll see a lot of that stuff, recurring theme for uh, uh, um, in the shop for uh, artwork and displays and stuff like that. So, regular, regular stuff. This is a pretty slick little engine that just came in. It's a uh, sleeved, bored out to 104, counterbalance shaft delete. It's gonna be a hot rod engine uh, for a customer. Work surface in the middle right here, nice big four by eight table. I'm a, a hardware I have right there, you can see Tons of stuff stored up on that uh, shelf right there. There's motors over there in front that are just uh, waiting for someone to say, yeah, Timmy, build me a motor out of that one. So that's gonna be a hot rod one. We're hoping for uh, around 180 horsepower, not, not anything wild, just uh, little mods. This is gonna be a racing engine probably for that car right there, which is a CRE 12. Um, we haven't built one in a while just because the prices have been so bad after the uh, recession and uh other motors motors parts um otherwise it's just sitting there we haven't run this car since 2012. i, I took it up to cal speedway and it, it uh, chucked out the front main seal don't know why but it did it twice and so we just i didn't have any confidence in the engine build so we yanked it out we'll put a fresh one in there you can see some more artwork on the walls up there in the mezzanine i've got 15 years of 944 parts up there everything from suspension to interior and same thing over here yeah, on, on these shelves, those are all interior bins, early, late, categorized. This is the 924 uh, Carrera GTS project. Um, I acquired this chassis a while ago. I wanted to start with an 87 or 88 924S, uh, which is not a 924. Uh, for all intents and purposes, it's a narrow body, early 944 with a uh, um, sprinkling of late 944 parts on it. but. A lot has been changed on this car. So um, I'll talk about it for just a second. I, I was acquiring pieces and parts from around the country, uh, mostly from SoCal. We have, we have the biggest collection of Porsches and Porsche parts in the world in San Diego and LA area. SoCal has, is easily the biggest repository for uh, parts in, in the world. So got a fiberglass body kit, so rear bumper, the Carrera GT flares, uh, there's a 924 GTR wing on the back. You can see how deep and, and uh, tall that thing is, man. It's, a, it's way bigger than a regular uh, stock 944. Uh, fiberglass fenders in the front right here. And in the front, we've got the, uh, the GTS, different from the Carrera GT. Uh, plexiglass headlight covers. There's a fiberglass 931 nose panel. The front spoiler is just hung in place. Got the uh, hood scoop, although that was glassed in. It should be separate with a bead uh, around it, uh, a rubber rubber seal. So got uh, BBS eights and nines by 16, one piece. Those are really like rarer than rocking horse crap. Uh, really uh, cool slick pieces. It's got a turbo suspension front and rear, turbo brakes. Um, I've got a monster engine in there. I'll talk about that in a minute. Got an old correct. Uh, uh, no, uh, almost correct. Uh, Recaro SPG Profesiale. That's a racing shell. Um, you can see the interior is already stripped. You can see where I'm going to put the tachometer for fun. That four inch hole in the steering column bracket makes a perfect location uh, right in line with your eyes and you know, top dead center where you can get it every time. We're converting the gas cap to a 924 style. So we're going to uh, put that guy in with the. Uh, filler neck, which I'm, I, if I remember correctly, it's got different threads from a 944. So we're just trying to make that look more racy and more correct, like a 924. But um, yeah, this is part of the exhaust, the little turbo exhaust underneath the car. Um, we're probably gonna run a turbo gearbox. Here's the guts of a, of a turbo gearbox. You can tell right away, because it's got that extra gear right there for driving the oil pump. And that's a little cooler right there. Super nice mod. Porsche made it standard in 1986. All the turbos came with a cooler. After that, they made it optional. Don't know why. Uh, it seemed like a good idea. They should have stuck with it. But uh, give me a half second and I'll, I'm gonna set the camera down and, and move this hood if I can. 
And let's see if I can get this thing shot for you. Hang on just a second. to delay good spot for a commercial guys and I'm working by myself this morning on uh, uh, Memorial Day so this is a monster engine that I acquired I didn't build it up but uh, realized the value and uh, go ahead and sunk some money into this uh, big parts collection and chassis and wheels that I bought from a guy but he knew what he was doing but uh, you can just see it's it's purpose-built <laughs> so starting from the bottom three liter knife edged 968 crank custom potter rods uh, monster uh, JE Pistons uh, bored out to 104 uh, you can see it's got the late tensioner on here AC delete bracket already on it uh, big old Garrett ball bearing turbo um, whereas the stock uh, K266 has got a two inch orifice in the front there this has got a three inch and uh, if you can see it's a counterbalance shaft delete but it still has the oil line in there feeding feeding the uh, turbocharger oil supply that's important uh, titanium valve train uh, ported head um, gosh what else it's just it's got a whole bunch of go fast goodies on it that uh, and the, the, the customer that I got it from was targeting this is like his fourth fourth or fifth turbo engine that he built up and he was targeting uh, almost 500 horsepower with this engine so should be a pretty fun thing and it'll make this little lightweight 924 uh, s chassis scoot and that's one of the reasons why I started with a, uh, a 924S chassis is because of all the modern pickup points. So on a 924, they have different suspension pickup points. They have uh, some of the early ones especially, but uh, they have a different cross member in the front and uh, it's just tougher to, to, to modify them up using 944 parts. So because this is a late chassis, 87, the suspension from a turbo bolts right up in, the motor drops right in on the uh, aluminum cross member everything is a lot easier to, to uh, upgrade when you start with a 924S chassis instead of a 924. So, and it's a, uh, you know, there, there are different differences there. And, uh, you know, they, they, it was worth it, was significant enough to, to go ahead and start with a 924S chassis. And uh, the Carrera GTSs, the GT, the, that family line, it's important to know about those cars because that's where the 944 came from directly from the, the 924 Carrera GT. Uh, that model's got a lot of stuff on it that came right over to the 944. So more fun if you know the history of the models and uh, just makes your, your whole experience a little bit richer because you know more about the car. You can see some spare wheels up there, phonies, cookies, sewer lids, um, more some more fun artwork. There's an old 924 deep production car poster. Don't even ask me about that one. That's just kind of funny. Uh, yeah, my old license plates that I ran on my 911 and when I was out terrorizing traffic in San Diego. There's a, there's a poster where I kicked Wayne Taylor's ass at go-karting. That was a fun night. He's a real good guy, real good driver. I really respect him, uh, um, honestly, for his ability as a driver and a team manager. Lots of success and his sons are even doing well too. But really fun to meet him at uh, Speed World that night. Uh, well, I don't know, must have been around the year two, 2000, 2001, something like that. And here's, we've kind of converted this room to a uh, retail showroom type thing. It was supposed to be the front office when the, the business before me was here, but we got a bunch of hot rod stuff. That hood is really unique. That's from one of a, just a handful. I think there were four 944 art cars made. Uh, if anybody watching the video knows about the history of those, um, more of it, then it'd um, be cool if you could uh, um, message me about that. Um, I know it was owned before uh, I acquired that hood. The chassis was owned by Derek Kajavi uh, from Huntley Racing here in San Diego. And before that, it was owned by Elliot Grossman over in La Jolla at Symbolic Motor Cars. But I'd like to see the other 944s that were art cars. They were signed by the artist. Uh, this one was an 86 pearl white with an African motif on it. And the artist was something like Arki, A-R-K-I, something like that. So I'd like to learn more about the history of that. But smattering of other uh, hatches, I see some fenders, doors, there's a set of D90s right there. 
other individual wheels, nice BBS. Those are 16, 7s, and 8s. Phone dials, of course. You guys already know about the wheels that are offered on the 944. There's some uh, polished intake manifolds ready to ship out. Another GTR rear fiberglass wing that's called a heck blender right here. That tail piece that goes in between the lights on the 944s. You can see some suspension springs, more liquid molly support. Uh, a couple sets of racing headers for the 944 and for the 924, actually. Those are long primaries, man. They must do wicked torque on the bottom end. But uh, some other fun stuff like that and a um, whole pair of Recaros. These are, these are just, they came out of that white 944 on the uh, Discovery video that I shot. Really cool seats and the, they're for sale. But uh, uh, that's about the whole shop. More parts over here, some torque tubes standing up. There's a sway bar selection right here for upgrading sway bars. Some fun stuff up in the attic. There's a sunroof delete uh, panel, up, uh, roof panel up there. More seat cores, with just stupid things. I got, I don't even know why I kept the dang things. I got 20, easily 20 seats in the shop just waiting to be redone for customers. But it's hard for me to throw away 944 stuff. So uh, that's pretty much what uh, we've developed into since the 10 years you've been gone uh, from working in the shop, Tyler. And it's awfully, awfully good to hear from you. Thanks for the kind words about uh, uh, my mentorship and teaching, uh, you know, racing and racecraft and car prep and all that stuff. And you're certainly welcome. So, uh, like I said, this video was shot exclusively for, exclusively for Tyler Hendricks and nobody else can see it. All right. Uh, you guys take care. Have fun with your 944s. We'll shoot some more uh, 944 specific videos and put them up on YouTube on, that, on my channel. Okay. Thanks. Have a good Memorial Day.